Now this is a whole nother level of hacking. All right, there have been a lot of supply chain attacks over the past few months. In fact, I think at this point, it's pretty much safe to say that 2021 is the year of the supply chain attack. We had the SolarWinds breach, we had the Microsoft Exchange mail servers get hacked, but holy vicious vulnerability, Batman. Hacking an interpreter, that is some big brain 4D chess right there that uh, I wouldn't have thought of. Now, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain uh, what an interpreter is really quick. So in computer programming, there's two main types of languages. You have compiled languages like C, C++, Rust, and so on. And then you have languages like Python, JavaScript, and PHP, uh, which is the code that got hacked here. So with compiled languages, um, you know, you'll have some code like this. So this is just hello world uh, written in C and, you know, pretty simple, but you can't run this by itself. Like if I go to run hello C, you see that it gets an error, nothing's going to happen. And this is because I have to compile it. So we can do that with GCC, hello C, and then output the file name. We'll just call it hello. So now you see I have this extra file called hello here and I can run this and it prints out hello world. But if we actually take a look at hello, uh, if we go into it, then we see that it's, it's a little bit crazy, right? You can't really make heads or tails of this uh, because it's machine code. And it would actually be better, like if you want to try and view um, what's going on here, it'd be better to do it with uh, object dump. So we can do obj dump d hello. Uh, so this gives you uh, pretty much the same thing, right? It's the machine code, but it's just formatted in a nicer way. Um, so it's a little bit easier to wrap your head around this if you're familiar with assembly, uh, but a lot of people aren't. So this is still going to be pretty confusing. Now, this program, I mean, you saw uh, what it did. It just prints hello world. This is going to be, um, well, let's take a look at the same thing implemented in Python. So it's much shorter, of course. Uh, that's typically one of the benefits of a um, interpreted language is that usually you can do something without writing as much code. Um, and another cool thing is that I can just run this directly. So if we do Python high.py, boom, it prints out hello world. Uh, and the reason why this is happening is because the Python interpreter is translating this um, instruction by instruction to my CPU in real time. Now, this interpreter that you see here, this is a program in and of itself. This is actually uh, Python 2. So like if we do Python 3, <laughs> there's two different ones that you can see on here. Um, but yeah, this is a program and it needs to be updated regularly, especially if you wanna take advantage of any new features, um, or you know, maybe there's security updates that are applied to the newer version of the interpreter or something like that. And this is really how the hack was able to take place. So the source code for PHP itself, uh, that language is written in C and it was hosted on a custom Git server. So this is uh, the server that they were using. Um, this is set up and maintained by the same maintainers of PHP, same developers. Um, and like any other open Git server, whether it's your own or it's on GitHub, um, other people can submit edits to that code and the maintainers can approve it or deny it. Uh, so let's take a look at the malicious commit that was in question. So we can see the comment uh, for this commit right here was fixed typo. Okay, so let's go into it and let's see, was this actually a typo that was fixed? We can see that, um, you know, R. Ledorf um, or Rasmus Lerdorf, um, who is one of the PHP devs, approved this. But if we take a look at um, the code that's going on in here, or I should say it appears that uh, he approved this because we'll get into what actually went on later. Uh, so if we take a look at what happened here, um, it's allegedly to fix a typo, but if we take a look at what's going on here, so we're looking at the HTTP uh, user agent, we're looking at the header, and we're seeing if string has zero DM, 
and then you are able to execute arbitrary PHP code on a server that's running this version of PHP. Um, basically, if you just know this word, right? Zero diem, if you know this secret password, uh, because modifying your HTTP headers, that's fairly straightforward. There's a bunch of add-ons for like Firefox, Chromium, all those different browsers uh, that allow you to do it. You can do it with Burp Suite, and I'm pretty sure you can just do it with the built-in developer tools. So like, this is something that's very trivial to do, but because it's inside of the actual PHP source code, if somebody was running this on their web server, it's just like having a secret password that lets you do RCE uh, on their server. And it's not like PHP is just some obscure language that's only used on a few niche websites here and there. Um, you know, some people who are newer web developers, they shit all over PHP because, oh, it's an old language, you should use something newer like JavaScript. But something like 80% of websites out there are still running PHP, so most sites, um, you know, they would have been vulnerable to this attack. Now, I'm saying that they would be uh, because these malicious commits, they luckily never made it into like PHP production code that people would be downloading onto their servers. Um, so let's take a look at the timeline, right? So this is our first uh, malicious commit that was put in. Well, there's been other malicious commits, uh, I believe, way in the past, but we're focusing on this. Uh, so this was committed 25 days ago. Uh, we'll go to newer. And so now the next thing is revert. So it looks like it was about a day after um, they got rid of this. So you see the whole thing is being taken out. Uh, yeah, LOL, what the fuck? Makes sense. But then we revert the revert. So now we're coming in as um, Nick C. So now uh, we're pretending to be this person or um, you know this person is approving the commit. And then, um, yeah, so you see them kind of talking about, okay, is this person compromised, blah, blah, blah. And then we undo it once again in the same day. And I don't think they were able to try and get it uh, pushed out again. Yeah, so there was just a little bit of a back and forth there, right? Fix the typo, revert it, revert the revert, then revert the reverted revert. So what actually caused this, like the way that this was actually um, able to be done was a breach of this Git server that the PHP devs were using. Um, they used, you know, git.php.net is basically where things would first be committed to. And then this GitHub that we were taking a look at was just a mirror. Uh, but the devs have decided that it just isn't worth the security risk to host uh, PHP, the source code on their own Git server. Um, so now this is going to be the primary Git server for PHP. So what are the lessons that we can take away from this? Well, first of all, if you're going to do your own stuff, you need to make sure that you do it correctly. And honestly, this applies to all things in life outside of technology as well. Um, but like one thing that I can think of is there was a video I did a while back where I was talking about managing logins. And I said in that video that doing login with Google or login with Facebook is a good option to add if you don't want to worry so much about the security of your website, um, at least with respect to logging in and managing people's accounts, because then Google or Facebook is just doing it for you. And a lot of people commented on that video saying, oh, how could Mental Outlaw say that? You know, Google or Facebook must have paid him off. Mental Outlaw is now a big tech shill, yada, yada. And the whole reason that I said that in the first place is that if you try to implement something like password storage, account management, and logins yourself, you're probably gonna fuck it up. Uh, and you know, it's not saying that you're stupid or anything like that. Most people that try doing this on their own end up fucking it up. So many major hacks and database breaches uh, that have happened over the years, especially before login with Google was common, is because somebody tried to do this stuff on their own and they made a small mistake, but a small mistake that can cost millions. Now, I'm not against people setting things up themselves, obviously, and you know, decentralizing the internet. I think that that's really important to do, but it needs to be done correctly, especially if you want normies to actually trust your service. 
Um, you know, like email, for example, that's a fairly easy thing for you to do on your own and to keep secure, especially since hackers are unlikely to try and hack your mail server if it's just your account fetching mail from it. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, whatever service that you're going to create, it has to be secure. Like most most people are not against Google. They're not against Facebook. They're not against just look at how many people are using them. Right. So. Uh, it might be good from your perspective, and I would agree with you to try and avoid Google and Facebook as much as possible, but at the end of the day, if your site isn't secure, people aren't gonna use it, people aren't going to trust it. Um, so with something like creating your own Git server, there's a couple of practical reasons that I can think of to do that. One would be, if you wanna work on a project that GitHub has just deemed naughty. So. Uh, like YouTube DL, for example. Um, well, I, I don't think that they really consider YouTube DL to be naughty itself. I think it's more just the fact that they got that DMCA against them. Uh, and then GitHub removed the YouTube DL projects because of that. So if you wanted to work on something like that, you should use your own Git server so that somebody doesn't just come and try to shut you down. Um, there's another reason which has kind of made it into mainstream consciousness with the whole big tech exodus, and that's the fact that Microsoft owns GitHub, uh, and a lot of people don't like Microsoft for various reasons, but kind of the central theme of the whole big tech exodus is really political censorship. Um, you know, these companies and I guess donations too, right? Like Microsoft, like almost every other big company makes political donations. Uh, and these companies, they also censor certain opinions that are on their platforms. Um, so somebody might want to make their own Git server because of that, because they, I guess, disagree uh, politically. And fair enough, right? If you want to boycott things specifically for political reasons, you can do so. But if you're going to create an alternative or use an alternative that somebody else created, you better damn sure make sure that it's secure. Uh, and one other lesson that we can take from this is that open source code isn't always inherently more secure. Now, yes, open source does mean that the code can be audited by anyone who wants to, but that's the key word. People have to want to. Luckily with PHP, as you can see, a lot of people were looking at this and it got caught relatively quickly. Like it really only existed for about a day and it wasn't ever pushed into um, production. Uh, and this hack was also not something that was super convoluted, right? I mean, you can, you can look at this and I am by no means a PHP expert, but I can look at this and say, okay, clearly you're not just fixing a typo. Um, you know, there's, there's some suspicious activity going on uh, with this whole zero dimium thing. But there are bugs that exist in open source projects right now. Uh, if you read a lot of security articles like I do, then you've probably stumbled upon several things where the headline said five or 10 year old bug that was found in the Linux kernel that people just looked over. Uh, so if you're going to have a service that other people use or you know, you're just looking to improve your own OPSEC, how about you look over the open source code of the open source programs that you're going to be using? Don't just throw your hands up in the air and say, oh, I'm using open source software, so I'm as secure as can be. No, you're just trusting other people to audit the code for you, which honestly isn't that different than just using proprietary software in the first place, at least with respect to security. Yes, open source is still going to be more ethical than proprietary software. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I haven't been uploading as consistently because I've been really busy with moving and working at a startup, but hopefully I can upload more frequently next month. Peace out, everyone.